What is Cleveland? This is Janice's Gems, and I'm Janice Manning, part of St. Martin de Porres Corporate Work Study Program, interning at TV20. Today, my guest is St. Martin's Chief Operating Officer, Miss Shamika Jones Taylor. Yay. Thanks for talking with me today. <laughs> Thanks for having me, baby. That, oh, I still get goosebumps. <laughs> okay, so tell me, what are some of your daily duties here at St. Martin? Well, now, as Chief Operating Officer, I have a lot of daily duties. And to tell you the truth, Janice, I made some notes. I'm just gonna run it down for you, okay? okay? <laughs> All right, so this is like a day in the life of me as the Chief Operating Officer. Mm -hmm. A huge part of the job deals with sales, okay. right? So because of the way our model works with our partners paying a portion and you all working for a portion of your tuition, I spend a lot of time doing sales, right? Okay. So that's trying to keep current partners and get new partners, and I don't do that alone. I work with some phenomenal people in order to make that happen. But a portion of it is sales. Another portion is what's called stakeholder management. What does that mean? It's like sales, but at a next level. It's okay. about relationships, right? So I need to make sure I got relationships with you all as students, relationships with your parents, relationships with your supervisors like Cornell, mm -hmm. relationships with the board, t just tons of relationships. So managing all of those stakeholders, relationships with our network. So I okay. mentor three other people like myself across the country. So tons of stakeholders management then we've got strategic planning so that's like what's the future right how do we stay relevant how do we make sure that's relevant and it's valuable for you so myself and other members of the leadership team like mr. Napoli Miss Hawkins mr. Trefiro our principal miss McBride mr. Harrison we all miss um, Suzanne Gall we all spend mm -hmm. some time making sure we are aligned properly and planning strategically for our future then there's daily operational oversight. So that's done <laughs> with my three directors and okay. managers that report directly to me. So there's the director of business development, that's Ms. Steph Rienzi, that's the director of H HR, Ms. Juan Hoko, let's see, the director of training and credentialing and operations, that's Ms. Leland Tuckman. So I manage all the day-to-day -day operations with the help of those persons. And we've got process improvements, if that's not enough. So when you think about an organization as a whole, you wanna think about how do we do things? How do we do them smarter? How do we do them more effectively? How do we do them to increase and add value? Again, that works hand in hand with that strategy. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of time thinking about my thinking. Okay. Are we making the right decisions, right? So I'll give you an example. Just yesterday in our leadership team meeting, we were talking about the budget mm -hmm. because this month we have to pass the budget. The budget has to go to the board and the board has to pass it. Mm -hmm. So we have to have conversations. A big portion of our budget is transportation. Are we using transportation effectively, right? Mm -hmm. Should we make some changes in our transportation, different routes and things of that nature? So all those operation things and business process team leadership, we talked about that already, mm -hmm. really being a part of, and so much a, as a coach, right? Okay. So I'm a coach. I don't do all the day-to-day -day things. Mm -hmm. That's what my directors and managers do, but I'm more of their coach okay. and a guidepost for them. HR compliance and risk management, mm -hmm. that's dealing with the adults. <laughs> Okay. So Ms. Hoko does a lot of it, but mm -hmm. I work with her on HR compliance and management. And then the last thing is crisis management. And unfortunately, things do happen, um, even at our school, right, mm -hmm. that are deemed as crises. And myself and the other members of the leadership team work on crisis management and problem solving. Okay. I spend a great deal of time on problem solving and crisis management. That sounds like a lot. So it's. It is a lot because you went like through five different things. So what is your favorite thing to do? What is like one of your favorites? So my favorite thing to do is probably really weird. Uh, most people wouldn't think of its favorite thing for mm -hmm. Shamika to do. My favorite thing to do, Janice, is like right before presentation day or PAL, when we have downtime mm -hmm. and we have you guys like in the gym or relaxing somewhere while we prepare for the event, I get to come play Uno with the kids, <laughs> laugh and talk smack and tell them how they about to lose because I've been playing Uno my whole life. <laughs> That's my real favorite thing to do. The other thing probably more directly related to my life is building partners. Okay. So telling everybody about this vision, telling everybody about our mission is also one of my favorite things to do. Okay, so what is your biggest challenge while managing all of this? Value. Okay. 
My biggest challenge is the value, Janice. And on a couple different levels, mm -hmm. right? Because we are such a unique high school, because we have those five pillars and we really try and do everything we can to operate mm -hmm. from those five pillars, you can imagine some conflicts come up, right? right? You can imagine that time is of the essence. Most of your peers, they're not going to work one day a week, right? Mm -hmm. They got five days of school. So how do we continue to build value for that? How do we make space so that we really are a school that works, study, serve, lead, and praise? Right. How do we put all of that together and everybody feel like they have enough time to do what they need to do and are bought into doing all of the things? Okay. So what are your strengths and weaknesses? Ooh, I wrote a list on that too. That's a good question. Okay, so we'll start with the opportunities for growth, which okay. some people call weaknesses. Miss mm -hmm. JT has a tendency to be a little bit controlling. Mm -hmm. True. It's okay. <laughs> I know so. You, okay, good. So then you understand. All right. I like things to go a certain way. Mm -hmm. I love decency. I love order. It's just who I am in my DNA. And I love planning. Right. And when you love those things, Janice, sometimes you hold on a little too tight, mm -hmm. right? And you don't delegate. It's not that you don't trust the people that are, have the responsibilities, but because you see what's at stake and so much is vested on the performance or the achievement of a thing, you can over control, right? right? And not release. So I have to work constantly and I have to be mindful constantly about that. Coupled with that is the way I come off sometimes. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'm thinking. I spend a great deal of time thinking about my thinking. I can even remember when I was in high school, people would say, smile, girl. I mean, you just look so mean all the time. You got a lot on your mind. I got a lot <laughs> on my mind. I'm working through the next thing. I'm planning. I'm thinking about the conversation I just came out of, which does sometimes lead me to not feel like people feel like I'm not present. Okay. Right? So like in this interview here, I had to really make some notes so that I could be present with you, right? So that you could see the softer side of Shamika, if you will. So that's something also I'm working on. Let me see what else we got here. <laughs> oh, flexibility. Okay. Yes. Along with wanting everything to be perfect. One of the things I learned from Principal Trefiro was that we weren't striving for perfection, okay. but we're striving for improvement. Quite frankly, the way I was raised and just the core of my DNA, I want everything to be right. Just going back to that everything in order, right? I want all I's dotted, all T's crossed at all times right. and everything in order. Uh -huh. And life isn't like that, right? Life is messy, is real messy. And so those are my opportunities for growth. Also known as <laughs> my weaknesses. Now my strengths, are on the flip side of that. I am extremely result oriented, right? I love planning. I've had a planner since I was in the 10th grade of high school, I kid you not, and I still have it. It's a pink and black day timer that I would take <laughs> notes on and plan That's out good. my whole life. I love planning, I love results, and working together to achieve those results. I think that's my strength. Mm -hmm. Coupled with that is my passion and my integrity. If I'm passionate about something, most people, right, I'm right. all in on that thing. You're gonna get 110% of Shamika. I, you know, my mother used to say, no half step in Shamika. Like I had the mother who said, if you got a C, you were average and there's nothing average in my household. That was the standard set okay. for me. So results, love it, love it. Leadership qualities. I do believe that I have a knack for helping people grow. Okay. Right? I love to have conversations, ask people what their dreams and aspirations are, mm -hmm. and help them achieve it. Okay. That I love, love, love doing that. That's good. Some people need structure. Yes. So, what are some of your favorite memories here at St. Martin? Ooh, some of my favorite memories. Yes. I have a lot. Okay. Uh -oh. I'm gonna say one of my first ones was my first graduation that I attended mm -hmm. as a staff person. So you may or may not know, before I came to work for St. Martin, I was a supervisor for 12 years at City Hall, where I worked oh, for, for a 20. work study student? Mm hmm okay. Yep, graduated three seniors. And I remember my very first graduation here. What was really special about it was being a part of the crate, okay. right? Being roved up with the other faculty and staff, 
signing the diplomas, like the first time I did that, that was just amazing. Exciting moment. Yes, it was a serious, it was a very serious moment for me. So that's one of my favorite memories. Okay, how do you think St. Martin de Porres have shaped you as a person? Ooh, that's a good question. I thought about that question long and hard when I saw <laughs> that. I would say a couple things. Okay. So prior to coming to St. Martin, I worked in municipal finance for the city of Cleveland for 20 years. And as you probably could tell from my personality, at some point I became an expert, if you will, in <laughs> municipal finance, right? It okay. was easy, it was structured, numbers and purchase orders, rules and regulations, I could do it in my sleep. Mm -hmm. Then I got to say, Martin, nobody knew. At first I was the VP of corporate work study, right? There was no friend I could call and be like, hey, what do you think about this VP of work study and what should I do in this? Okay. And there were so many different facets of the job, right? You had to be a leader, you had to be a good salesperson, you had to be really relational and communal in your responses. And so it pulled on some skill sets that I didn't even know I had. Okay. And with the help of my uh, blessed Lord and Savior, <laughs> a lot of grace, a lot of patience and some coaching. Uh -huh. I grew, I grew a great deal. It led to some opportunities to be noted as a woman of note uh -huh. in Crane's Business Magazine, Cle Leadership Cleveland class of 2022, I believe. And so it, it pulled some things out of Shamika that I didn't even know was in me. Okay, so, so over the years, what new skills have you, do you think you developed? Ooh, grace and patience. Okay easily grace and patience. Um, when you want things to be right mm -hmm. and you want it on your timing, you learn really quickly, especially dealing with teenagers. It's not about you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> it's about them. It's about their journey. Mm -hmm. It's about them grabbing and wanting the best for themselves and you partnering with them in order to achieve it. Okay. And for our supervisors and our companies, it's the exact same thing. I remember when I first started and we would sell and we would talk all about all the things the school did and all of that. And my sales coach said to me, nobody cares about that. Right, that's what I said. I was <laughs> like, wait, what? He was like, you gotta make this personal. You gotta yeah. make this relational, Shamika, for, in order for this to work. You've gotta understand what that person that's across from you needs mm -hmm. and then draw it to that. So growing in that way was huge for me and seeing you all, what your needs were, what your real needs were and seeing what our partners needs were. Okay, so if you could make one huge change, like if you was able to make one huge change about St. Martin, what would it be? It goes back to your first question about one of the things I love. Okay. If I can make one huge change, mm -hmm. I would really want everybody to embrace Mm -hmm. the messiness that is a five pillar school, okay. right? A lot of times as human beings, we see especially the constraints of time as conflict. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with a little conflict. That's a healthy thing, Janice. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that. That's really important to know. A lot of times when we think of conflict, we think automatically to run from it, right? Okay. But conflict means that there's something that's challenging us, right? Conflict means that there's some growth opportunities there. And so what I would change about St. Martin is all of us leaning into the fact that we are a five pillar school and celebrating each pillar equally. Okay. Fully celebrating, letting go of the notion, oh, at the end of the day, we're just a school, or at the end of the day, we're just a corporate work study business, or at the end of the day, we're just a Catholic school. No, we're all of those things together, and we gotta celebrate it every single solitary day. Plus, Janice, I might put y'all in blazers going off to work. Just say <laughs> just say it. <laughs> okay, so what is some advice that you would give to a youth who just needs some good advice? What's the first thing you're gonna say? I would say something my grandmother used to tell me okay. all the time. And it's a real simple yet, when you think about it, it's like really hard to do. She would say, Shamika, make decisions that are in line with your goals and your values. Okay. And that's hard <laughs> to consistently make every single solitary decision that's in line with our goals and our values. Okay. A lot of times we think about one or the other, right? Yeah. I'm going to go and 
lunch with my friend because my friend just called me and I feel like doing that, right? I value okay. my friendship. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna stay 15 minutes late? No, because I got a goal of getting a good grade in corporate work study, okay. right? So even as adults, we do those things. So one of the things that was key for me, that's an example of this, is why I chose to come to St. Mark. Mm -hmm. For me, giving up a 20 year career where I only had 11 years till I could have retired at 55 years old was huge. But what I wanted for my life, my goals and my values, Janice, was about making an impact. Okay. It was about doing something for the next generation. It was about finding the next Shamika and being there for her. Okay. So I had to decide, was I gonna stay comfortable with the job I could do in my sleep, or was I about to take on this new challenge and okay. opportunity? So what impact would you like to leave on your students and on your coworkers or bosses? Like, what impact would you like to leave? I would hope and pray <laughs> <laughs> that I'm leading by example. Okay. If you ever heard the phrase, people don't care about the sermon that comes out of your mouth, they care about the sermon that they see, mm -hmm. you live in every day, that's what I want. I want for my values to spring forth. I want for all of the things we just talked about in the conversations, the grace, the patience, the planning. I want all of those things to come forth. The collaboration. Mr. Napoli talks about that all the time. Yes. <laughs> you, you heard him talk about this all the time, right? Us collaborating as a body. I want to live those things okay. every single day. And I want that to be my impact on this organization. Okay, so from five to 10 years now, what do you hope that St. Martin will look like? Like what would the culture look like, the building, the students, like what do you think St. Martin will be like in five to 10 years? Ooh, this is good, this is juicy. Okay, so we'll start with the building. Okay. In five to 10 years, we would have a full completed campus. Okay. Not just one building, Janice, yeah. but soon we'll be breaking ground on another capital campaign to add and build a gym, a student life, and a career center. Okay. And in that space, again, we're talking about our five pillars all coming together real time in real life, okay. like just this beautiful building. We got a couple renditions of it that are absolutely <laughs> gorgeous, okay. but we got to raise the money. Mm -hmm. By the way, anybody, it's about $10 million. Feel free to donate, contact our advancement office. Okay, back to our real estate <laughs> program. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. Mess. But that's what I would want for the building. Okay. Right, I would want to see our campus completed with our activities, student life, and gym center. What I want for our culture, though, goes back to what we talked about earlier. Us being a culture of grace, a culture of compassion, mm -hmm. right? Us being really patient with us, with ourselves, and us embracing the complexity, yet the beauty that is our model, because it is complex. It's not easy, it's not for the faint at heart, whether you are a teacher, a supervisor, a student, or a parent, right? Mm -hmm. We ask a lot, but I wanna see us embrace it. I wanna see us have hard conversations about it and grow. I wanna see us make plans and intentions to grow as an organization. Okay, so when you think of the name St. Martin or the school of St. Martin, what makes you smile? Well, that's good. When I think of St. Martin, mm -hmm. what makes me smile, honestly, are you having opportunities like this? Okay. Your work study job coming to full fruition and you having your own show, mm -hmm. you having this opportunity, that makes me smile. When I hear about students who, you know, a supervisor was bold enough to let them see a surgery, don't y'all see on nobody, that makes <laughs> me smile, right? When a student says, oh, at my job, we, oh, that, that makes my heart right. dance because that means that student has fully embraced that placement and they can only do that if they feel like they belong mm -hmm. there. If that supervisor and that company has done the hard work of saying, we see you, we love you, and you are welcome here. Okay. Those are the things that make me smile. From an adult community, when we come together and we celebrate, whether it's a Black History Month program, whether it's a clam bake in the fall and we're all laughing together and mm -hmm. dreaming and having good conversations, those things make my heart dance too. Thank you for talking with me today and telling me all these wonderful things. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Can I give you a hug? Yes, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Ooh, 
Thank you for watching. I am Janice Manning and this is Janice's Gems. Until next time, but remember, all gems are not made of stone, but of love.